Okay, so this will be, you're actually going to see, you're actually going to see the drive unit in motion here and how all the parts uh, that we just walked through play together. And so again, this is going to be about uh, utilizing the battery energy from the battery pack. You've probably already figured out where it's packaged in the car. Um, having it then connected uh, DC cabling ultimately to uh, the power electronics to the inverter. That inverter then connected by these AC cables to the electric drive. <coughs> the electric drive then able to have um, output through these half shafts to ultimately drive the wheels. And then when we get into range extending mode, the internal combustion engine, which draws its energy source from the fuel tank to provide that additional supplemental, um, uh, supplemental energy. So okay, we're going to do a deep dive now into, into the actual drive unit. Okay, here's the parts we just talked about, the large traction motor, the planetary gear set would be located uh, behind this cover, the generator motors over here, we talked about the fact there's two clutches um, kind of packaged uh, inside this traction motor. When I say inside, not inside the diam you know, the open diameter. Um, another one inside this generator motor, we have the final drive uh, gearing, the differential output. And through this animation, you're going to be able to watch vehicle speed, and we're going to show you the relative speeds between the motor, generator, and the engine. Okay, so now we are in, we are in electric driving, and we're going to have one motor driving. So that was the first scenario that I talked through. And then, so in this case, we lock the ring gear to the case, we pull energy from the battery, the traction motor uh, drives the output through this uh, gear reduction to the wheels, and at 30 miles an hour, you know, we have a uh, relatively low motor speed um, driving the output. At the same time, we've got the generator motor and obviously the internal combustion engine going along for the ride. Works great, very efficient, low <laughs> speed, very capable of driving the car. We can accelerate in this situation, you know, up to 70 or even up to 100 miles an hour uh, very capably. Again, the issue is, you know, this motor speed, you can see, has increased significantly. <laughs> and, you know, anytime you have high, you know, speeds increase, friction increases, losses increase, and so just, just inefficient. So we can do better, and we do do better, and that's where we uh, transition to this two-motor driving. So how do we do that? Well, first we take this generator and we connect. We connect the generator to the ring gear, and then we release the ring gear uh, from its stationary hold. And now we're driving the output uh, with both motors. And you can see when we do that, the speed of the traction motor comes down significantly. You know, it was about 6,500 RPM, and now it's about 3,250. So a significant reduction. The generator speed is uh, uh, very moderate and manageable, and so. You know, this is going to get you another couple miles of EV range. Okay, now we're transitioning to extended range driving. So again, we're going to have this one motor series driving. We're going to accelerate. We've again got the ring gear locked um, uh, to the case. We're turning the traction motor. We've now connected the generator motor to the engine. You can see them spinning in tandem. And at 30 miles an hour, we have a fairly uh, moderate, manageable traction motor speed as well as generator and engine speeds. Works great, capable of a full performance envelope of the car. You know, story uh, no different than before where we're going to accelerate the car here. We'll use 70 miles an hour um, as the example. And the notion is that, um, you know, as we do that, you can see this traction motor speed really climbing, uh, you know, back up to around 6,500 RPM. So, we have choices to make, we have good choices to make here to, uh, to bring this down, and ultimately that's, that's what we do. So when the driver is making demands that um, uh, you know, aren't for very heavy accelerations, aren't for passing maneuvers, we are able then uh, to transition um, out of this mode with the high motor speeds and go into this combined driving, which was the last example that I had given. And when we do that, okay, we got a lot of motions here. We just, um, we just released the motor and the generator. We now hook the generator to the ring gear. We've released the ring gear from the case. We're going to spin the generator back up so that we can now connect it to the engine. A lot of motions there. 
And you can see in this, in this situation, now the motor speed again down significantly, you know, less than half what it was in the prior um, power flow. The engine and generator combined are operating at a fairly moderate speed. And again, this is worth about 10 to 15 percent efficiency in cruising type conditions. So we think um, well, well worth our efforts here. So very capable. We, we call it a combined mode. We can take this mode. We can accelerate in this. When we accelerate, you can see we can drive up a little more generating um, uh, capability. We've raised the speed of the engine generator combination. And when we're in this combination, so what's happening? So now you can imagine that on this planetary gear set, we have the, um, uh, we are driving the engine generator combination, you know, onto the ring gear. We're utilizing the traction motor to provide the reactionary force so that we can ultimately drive the output. And so that, that is what happens in combined mode. That's what allows us to get the 10 to 15% 10 to more efficiency.